Audrey Hope is one of the main characters of the show, Gossip Girl 2021, who is known for her icy exterior with a warm heart. She is the supportive friend, loving daughter of a troubled home life, overachieving student, and a fetching girlfriend in an unsound relationship, as well as a dalliance with the group's playboy. Audrey has a penchant for the finer things life has to offer, such as old glamour and dinner parties, alongside an appreciation for the classics, accompanied by contemporary taste. She's an avid reader who relishes feminist theory and is very outspoken, despite her soft conduct possessing a strong-willed demeanor. She is described as having a certain type of grace and competence, of self-assurance of who she is, despite not being what is necessarily in. However, because of this, she is someone who is always thinking and wanting more, since she does not think within this box. Audrey's fashion is the combination of classic elements, with modern refinement and sometimes a dash of duality. She is always polished yet laid back with undone elements. Another component of her aesthetic is her love of vintage pieces that pay tribute to the elegant glamour of the past, but with a subtle edge and juxtaposition, paired with a hushed softness. If you're interested in this style of dress, I have a video dedicated to curating an effortless chic wardrobe. Audrey has a realistic and romantic notion of life. This is grounded within the staples of her looks, such as often opting for blazers, overcoats, boots, and neckties. Very structured, strong, and proper garments to create her ensembles, paired with mini skirts, oversized soft sweaters, and most likely a heel. For example, a Mary Jane pump. Audrey has a sentimental tone conveyed by the Cartier Love bracelet that is always present on her wrist. For instance, winter is her favorite season and she loves to stroll in the snowy central park but she is an overthinker, often in her head, in her own world. She often takes cues from the old world fashion icons, such as Audrey Hepburn, Jane Fonda, and Lauren Bacall. She modernizes their essences and coats of dress to suit her taste. Audrey has an unconventional side, a side that is usually hidden in surfaces and vulnerable or high intensity moments. The executive producer on Audrey states, when she gets stressed in the morning, it's for herself, not for the world. The executive producer also stated that she has a particular fondness for the fashion house of Chanel, a very telling favorite as it is in the mission statement to be the ultimate house of luxury, defining style and creativity creating desire, now and forever. The house is synonymous with femininity, elegance, and sophistication through a Parisian lens of style. This conveys Audrey's primary essences and inspirations, as well as their preferences and presenting herself. Audrey has an appreciation of fashion, an eye for it, the beauty of it. What about this one? And how style is a combination of what you think, feel, want, and do. She also sees how it functions and is needed in her world as a socialite. So I got you something. Mm. Well, I rented it. It's, um, it's Austin Heritage. Did somebody die? Must your closet. This is life. Audrey's appearance is an extension of what she loves, who she is at this present time, what she needs, and who she aspires to be. An element of this is color scheme, though Audrey is often adhering to a school dress code, even in her looks outside of class. She strays away from overtly bright or saturated pieces, going more for the blacks, whites, neutral tones, such as creams or grays. The significance of this is not just rooted in wardrobe curation, which of course is producing the chic and elevated image, but black is the color of control, independence, sophistication, and seriousness. Although neutrals can create a more European or classic look, they do indicate a lack of enthusiasm, passion, and sentiment, but are often very timeless, versatile, and of course natural. This is the imagery that Audrey is 
drawn to, the muses, the captivating strong women, and goes on to projecting this image. It should be noted though that in the beginning of the show, she is much more soft sporting more pink and soft garments. Audrey's room consists of traditionally feminine and girlish hues, and opposite of her usual looks, such as mauves and pinks. This room is rooted in her inner life, her place of rest and refuge. Pink symbolizes sweetness, acceptance, nurturement, vulnerability, and safety. It is a color that produces a calming effect on the mind as well. The room is in her troubled home, and is the only place that captures her girlhood. In hand of this, Mauve adorns the room, which provokes feelings of nostalgia, sentiment, and romance. Both of these tones are diluted and less prominent, yet catch the light. This links to Audrey's views of herself and what she believes she's in need of as she strives to navigate life while feeling the demands of what it means to be a woman too soon, the loss of her childhood due to her mother's poor mental health, and wanting to explore her desires. Though she has friends to confide in and a support system in her peers, she is young and does not have someone to guide her, so she often turns to the comfort of novels. Whether it be lounging on the Met steps or the school courtyard, she isn't just sporting a preppy intellectual look, but a look that is an extension of her mindset, an authentic one. She reads compassionate and heavy classics or feminist literature outside of mainstream titles with notable literary personages that explore numerous themes on a multitude of levels. Bibliotherapy is defined as a creative arts therapy that involves storytelling or the reading of specific texts with the purpose of healing. It uses an individual's relationship to the content of the books, poetry, and other written words as therapy. This is not to take the place of professional help but to complement in terms of emotional support and the development of coping mechanisms. Another psychological experience often with books is that it may be an escapist read. This may be positive or negative. According to studies, readings can be driven by a desire to break away from countless constant streams of visual information, to get away from these screens in order to look within oneself or delve into another experience outside of our own. Reading is an art form that impacts both figuratively and biologically. For example, if you're reading a book where a character is running, the areas of your brain, when scanned, would light up just as if you were physically running yourself. This effect can be visibly seen in brave wave scans when you read. Long term, according to neuroscience, especially in adolescence, it will increase memory capacity, rewire the brain to some extent, and even create new white matter. These novels do not only provide entertainment, and a moment of reverie, but also aid in developing insight into her own life experiences from many points of view. Theory of the mind which is defined as the ability to attribute mental states, beliefs, intense desires, emotions, and knowledge to ourselves as well as others, serving as one of the foundational elements for social interaction. Theory of the mind provides the ability to forecast and decipher life's events. Many times, more often than not, Audrey's novels of choice explore a range of topics such as womanhood, desire, autonomy of the body, to relationships, scandals, and glamorous lifestyles of decades past. It should be noted that many of her books do not have a focus on one sole main character, but rather an abundance of stories with a range of identities and experiences. Typically, the protagonist followed in short stories and essays, despite being the main character, will be the type of person who does not meet convention. The odd one out, but not necessarily a misfit, revealing how her sense of a path is somewhat muddled. She doesn't feel a driving force to be the center of attention. Despite her uncertainties though, her apprehension she is grounded within herself with the ability to speak her mind and have high empathy with others. But don't worry about how it looks. 
Do it for yourself. You're all id all the time, and honestly, my ego is just exhausted by it. Be a little bit more sensitive, okay? You never know how someone at the table identifies. And has high empathy with others whom she cares for, but not so much with herself. Hence the sudden outbursts and self-degradation, despite her high emotional intelligence that has developed through her readings. Audrey's exploration of themes aids in her developing her worldview, but her sense of self does not shift. As the show progresses, her style is very much developed prior and does not experience any drastic changes until the finale. Her fashion is rooted in her ideals, lifestyle demands, personality, and aesthetic preferences. I've already gone over the specific details, such as the brands and meaning of the first look in the video, the psychology of how you dress, and first impressions a style analysis on the very first episode of the series. Her initial outfit is polished and refined, yet very girlish. She is also spotted while reading Ornament in the Silence, Essays on Women's Lives, from Edith Wharton to Jermaine Greer by Kennedy Fraser, a book with compassionate insight through 15 essays on women, exploring the subject matters of friendship, love affairs, family, and marriage, matters that Audrey is very preoccupied with, opposite of her girlish look, a Chanel dress code associated with elegance but a sexier take of the little black dress through a Mugler mesh panel dress. Later in the episode, she sports a light mauve Reformation Brecken ruched ribbed bodycon dress for the fashion show, and when her curiosity begins, at the end of the episode, she's in another look consisting of pink, and the novel is very telling of what is in store for Audrey. In episode 2, her uniform moment involves a Veronica beard, Miller Dickey fitted jacket, paired with pinstripe trousers, a white button down, and a necktie, adorned with a Givenchy chain at the collar, for a subtle edge to a chic look finished off of Ferragamo 55 and the Rantan bag, a more clean-cut yet laid-back look as things begin to look up and she feels more carefree. Here, she's also seen caring for her mother and preparing for the fundraiser by which she will serve as social chair. For this, she wears a serial cut-out bow detailed satin gown with light and minimal gold jewelry, practicing reflets, focused opulence. To go with this look, she has a YSL leather envelope clutch with a contrasting white. Alice and Olivia, high neck coat. We see her beauty and glamour influences through a very natural makeup look with a red lip, an ode to the classics as she is always going for the elegantly fashionable. But as her relationship and home life begin to spiral, Audrey's soft demeanor hardens. The spectrum begins to be explored, which is evident not only through her actions and words, but also her chunky twist knit sweater vest at the end of the episode that is grey, a very common theme. She wears this while reading Black Swans by Eve Babbitts. This novel has a much more mature narrative and sheds light on the darkness of what is hidden, Lives of the Glamorous, and nine autobiographical short stories. Black Swans is very telling of social identity. It's the sort of book that Audrey sees herself in. For example, this line, she looked mean and stylish, as if she were supposed to be beautiful, and you could take her word for it. But from afar, she looked a lot better than Close Up. Another novel that she is spotted reading is The Days of Abandonment, carrying a similar theme in a more raw manner. The novel explores the emptiness a woman endures after she's abruptly left, and that her life is forever changed. Though reading is not the antithesis of social media, Audrey's placement in the show is in contrast with the other characters. These books, in a way, are Audrey's gossip girl in the sense that they look into different lives. Audrey is hyper-focused on womanhood, forsaken lovers, affairs, and cheating scandals, glamour, the issues of her family and personal life. In the third episode, 
episode. Her outfits have overtly nautical roots, like this rag and bone Jamie Stretch wool cropped polo, paired with Robertson flared sailor trousers, which visually represents not only preppy coats of dress, but in concept, safety, and stability, which is what she longs for. Typically speaking, I would like to err on the side of caution. In fear of the impact of her relations with Max, as well as the dwindling relationship with Aki. With her uneasy home life, her color scheme here is becoming very neutral, going on the spectrum from lights to a different type of light, which can be read as flesh or nude. These neutral colors symbolize peace and a calm state, which is what she wants to project. Interestingly, these color schemes are either linked to reliability or boredom. Her inner state of mind is captured in both her preppy school uniform and glamorous look that are still polished, but her inner state is surfacing more as she becomes more vapid. In the end of this episode, she is again in grey and left still in an uncertain state, longing for rekindling what she once had of Aki, regardless of the cheating that has occurred. While in a soft schoolgirl look, comforted and secured by a Tommy Hilfiger collection, color block Letterman cardigan, Audrey reads Her Body and Other Parties by Carmen Maria Mikado, another novel of short stories, except this time there is a higher intensity, blending psychological realism, horror, fantasy, comedy, and science fiction. The otherworldly aspect allows for the exploration in a whimsical yet sometimes frightening way that is embedded in reality. Later, again she is with Julia and we see her look beneath the sweater. Of course, it is a uniform, but it's very oversized and loose, more so than previously. It is curated and there is a free yet insecure component. Later in that episode, she is wearing another bodycon look and the most saturated color we see her in, as she makes a poor attempt at provoking jealousy out of Aki. Her overcoat, in the end is a darker grey, communicating her complexity at this time, since grey is defined as a morally ambiguous and impartial hue due to how it falls between absolutes. A bit of time passes, she makes an appearance in a more regal put together uniform look, very different than we last saw her. A Valentino lace paneled coat and navy on top of a cable knit puff sleeved top, wide legged trousers, and wanderer Leslie leather knee high boots, finished off with a Giorgio Armani La Prima bag in hand, along with Joan Didion, the White Album, a more classic piece of literature that differs greatly from the rest of her reading an examination of the 1960s figures and events. The first section will only showcase one focal essay, while the other sections are divided depending on the main theme. Ones that go along with her readings are women, and on the morning after the 60s. Another read made in this look is The Complete Poems by Anne Sexton, a book of poems noted to be about the truth of people's inner lives, more so in relation to mental illness and the tensions of womanhood. Mirroring Audrey's position as the child caregiver, her developing understanding and compassion for her mother, and her progressing seeker inner life of Aki and Max. From this, we can see Audrey is the type to wear her heart on her sleeve. Though she may be read as cold and uncaring at times, she is a very emotional girl who knows herself what she deserves and what she has to offer. Despite coming from an emotionally uneasy home life, relationship complications, and at times distance friendships, she is very grounded, supportive, and a benevolent person. Dealing with mature issues, much beyond herself and age. She actively continues to grow as a person, dealing with these moments in spite of her mistakes, wrongdoings, flaws, and conflicts. Though often casting herself aside and not having a winner mentality, we do see Audrey evolving as a person and beginning to understand the world more, not through a lens of knowledge or emotions 
but through experiences, authentic connections, and learning outside of her own head. Obviously, there is much more in store for Audrey and to come in terms of development, but from her outfits and novels in part one, we can understand her headspace throughout these events and the ones to come as she begins to follow her own motto of do it for yourself. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe, like, turn on notifications, and comment. Thank you so much for watching.